Hey everybody, it's Dunder Mifflin time, for those of you who know, <laughs> best TV show ever. Anyway, just as I was starting, guess what happened? Bitcoin just went above $47,000, which is great news. But as usual, let's not waste any more time. And... Not waste any more time. Yes, everything's working. Audio. It's always such a relief when we have sound. So let's talk about math, money, and freedom. And this is edutainment. So please talk to your financial advisor when you're trading crypto. Let's look at the market right now. Real quick, everybody. Uh, <laughs> and the big theme of today is really how everything is cyclical and cyclical cycles. And that's what I want a lot of you to wrap your heads around today. So when I did this screen a few minutes ago, it was 46,600 in Bitcoin. Now it's $47,002. So let's see if we can keep it in the 47,000s with the good juju. Um, but what you notice from this chart here is a couple of things. One, you'll see that what traditionally has been extremely strong has now become very weak, Solana. And there's a number of reasons for that. We'll go over that today as well. But then you have the ones that are very slow to move all of a sudden are on fire. You've got Polkadot, Tron, EOS, etc. all on fire. Then you have the ones that have exploded are now weak. Uh, Luna, Solana, Adam, Algorand, Avalanche, like clockwork. And that's the big message we're going to kind of dig in today is figure out why things move in cycles and why it's important to know as well. So second thing, let's talk about FUD. We always like to start with some FUD. So the central banks are very, very, very concerned and they warn Bitcoin could collapse and it isn't a safeguard of value, warn global central bankers because they're losing control. So Riksbank uh, Governor Stefan Ingves said that he doubts Bitcoin uh, and the power of it and he's very worried about the fact that Bitcoin is not government backed. And I think he described Bitcoin as private money. And he said private money usually collapses sooner or later, which I thought was kind of hilarious because if you ever picked up a history book, and I know they have them in Stockholm, that, and no offense, I've got a lot of Swedish people here and I love you all dearly, um, but the problem is fiat dies. Private money, what is that? So it's, anyway, eh. Let's not waste any more time on that stuff. So let's talk about Europe. While we're on the topic of Europe, the Europe Central Bank will not be outdone when it comes to money printing. This, this is even more vertical than the American uh, balance sheet from the Fed. And Lagarde, I know you're big fans of Lagarde out there. They, she's keeping those money printers printing and rumbling and whatever else. But what's really interesting is the, if you look at this chart carefully, total assets rose by about another 16 billion euros. The total balance sheet now is about 8.25 trillion euros of quantitative easing. And what's really more concerning, though, is the European Central Bank right now makes up about 80% of Eurozone GDP. And that's way worse than the situation in the US. The Fed makes up about 36, 37% of uh, GDP in the US. And the Bank of England is about 40%. Bank of Japan, about 130%. So you can see that Europe is catching up to Japan in terms of money printing. So good for Europe. And remember, all the roads lead to Bitcoin. And this is what these central banks are so worried about. But let's talk a bit more about not just the central banks, but the banks themselves. This is an article from Bloomberg. And it kind of maps out how banks can lose $60 billion to cyber cash highways. Oh, how scary. A faster, smoother pathway for transferring money at very, very low or very little fees is scaring the banks. Now, what they're referring to it as is Model 3. Sounds like a Tesla, but it's not. It's a moniker for information highways on which funds will zip from one country to another at almost zero cost. Somebody moved, I think, a couple of billion Bitcoin for like, 20 cents or 2 cents, I can't remember the exact numbers. But this is what's concerning. And banks ought to worry because they make a lot of money from their cross-border transfers, their FX exchange fees, and all the other banking fees. And the rail of this whole new crypto digital world is extremely scary. And again, $60 billion in fees could be lost. So what are they going to do? We'll see. They're going to fight it as long as they can. So I think that's going to, what's going to happen. And then funny, uh, documenting Bitcoin said it so beautifully. In response to this article, 
basically, Bitcoin was designed to replace central bankers. That only means one thing. It works or it's working or whatever else. So I thought that was extremely poignant. But let's talk a little bit more about some more good news and dispel the FUD. So uh, many people don't know the, the true history of Mr. Abad for a second, of El Salvador. But something like 70% of the El Salvadorians are unbanked and live in poverty. Um, we touched on how hard it is to get banked in yesterday's video for many, many different reasons. Trust, distance, paperwork, all that type of stuff. The IMF and banks in El Salvador had 20 years to bank the unbanked. They got nowhere. Now, with Shivo, which is the Bitcoin rail down there on mobile devices, they have onboarded 1 in 12 El Salvadorians, or half a million people, in a week. This is staggering. So just think about that. <laughs> it's just, it shows that this whole Bitcoin experiment in El Salvador, it's already working. Yes, they had some bugs, but the president is working, working hard with a lot of his partners on fixing them all, and they're almost there. So this is extremely good news. Now, that's speaking of 500,000, Kathy Wood keeps pounding the table. She was at a conference yesterday, and she keeps pounding the table that Bitcoin is going to tenfold from where it is today. And what I like about this, and I like about Kathy, is... She doesn't waver. She's very consistent. She's always like, last year, she was saying, in 2020, 500,000, half a million dollars. They've been analyzing numbers for Bitcoin since 2017. And her thesis has not changed. And that stability is extremely good. So basically, it's a 10x from here. And looking at the quick Bitcoin watch, why is it flat? It can't actually be so flat for so long. Uh, it is dipped below 47,000, so let's bring that juju back. Anyway, the point is, don't worry about the short-term undulations. She's saying it's going to 10x, so half a million dollars is coming. Um, now, in terms of the volatility yesterday, a lot of people bought the dip. Congratulations to you all. And sniping is such a key trait for my, my TA Tuesday last week. So I can't believe it's a week ago already. I'll do a little bit of TA today as well. But after extreme volatility from that whole Walmart fake news thing, it really hurt the crypto market, but that hurt and that pain is actually a good thing for us because those that haven't filled their bags yet and have a little bit of fiat they need to burn, they can just jump in and grab some. So don't be afraid. It takes a lot of courage to go in and buy the dip because a lot of people think, oh, well, it could fall more and I don't want to catch a falling knife and stuff like that. But this stuff just is so volatile, but we'll talk more about that right now. So, uh, as you guys know, I tweeted over two and a half weeks ago. I estimated the Golden Cross to hit on the 13th of September. I was wrong. I was a day off because we had a huge dip over the last couple of days, and that set off my trajectories, uh, I'm afraid. But anyway, we are literally about to hit this exact moment, which is very important. And you can see from the chart here, the past Golden Crosses, and there haven't been that many of them, there was a tiny mini one back during the C19 when that began, but that's because there was just such crazy black swan events in the marketplace, so we can ignore that one. But the gold uh, crosses you see here, we have October 2015, we have May 2019, May 2020, May seems to be popular, and September 2021, i.e. today. Congratulations, everybody. We had death crosses, April 2018th, October 2019th, and June 2021. And what this tells us, though, everybody, it's very important to remember, it doesn't guarantee, like death crosses, uh, I've proven are effective half the time, but golden crosses, they work 80% of the time. So there's a very, very uh, different angle there. Again, barring any unforeseen black swan events, which could take the whole market down. But what it does tell us is... Uh, they certainly are a good sign historically for Bitcoin. And every time we have a golden cross, you see from the chart here, we had a big move upwards. And uh, so we'll see. There will be some volatility on the way. And remember, September sucks. It might continue to suck. But so far, it's looking pretty good. Um, let's jump on a little bit further. And now I'm going to talk about smart contract wars. And boy, were they unleashed today. I did this video last week, and I kind of compared all of the top uh, smart contract platforms. In our view, we don't shill anything. We just like to place our money where we believe is the safest bet. So 
No offense to anybody. And we are well aware of centralization risks. We are well aware of tokenomics. We've analyzed everything every which way. So we know everything. So let's talk a bit about cycles and rotations. And this is very, very important in the stock market and also very important in the crypto market. So what we've seen happen is initial rotations into Ethereum early in the year and then into kind of secondary players like the up-and-coming Solanas. And now we're seeing the rotation into the tier three players like the polka dots or i don't want to offend anybody by saying that but here's some quick numbers i pulled together to highlight these cycles and rotations across all these different sectors so these are all the smart contract platforms you're all very familiar with the ones we watch pretty closely ethereum cardano solana polka dot lunaswap avalanche algorand tron cosmos stellar and tezos so the few items to note here is the rotations. So if you look at the last 90 day return, you'll see Solana is still the winner. Now, a lot of people are freaking out because Solana has been really bad over the last seven days. It's down, what, 14 or 15 uh, percent and it's 30 percent off the all time high. But hey, relax, everybody. It's cyclical. And if you've seen what Solana went through today, which I'll discuss in a little while as well, you will understand why it's so bad. But every dog has its day, as they say. Things move in cycles. And if you look at what the lower market cap players and how they've sprung to life over the last week or two, Luna, Algorand, Cosmos, all big over the last seven days. So again, I want you to understand, and I always say, it's going to pop, it's going to pop. Some things just don't pop like Matic and keep prodding it. It's just not moving. Uh, Chainlink is a little bit weak, but these are kind of separate players. But all these puppies, they do pop eventually. So let's show you a little bit of what I'm talking about in terms of cycles. This is Polkadot versus Solana year to date. Okay, big chart. Polkadot is in that teal blue and orange for Solana. I always paint orange Solana because it's like the sun for me, even though it means beach. So here you can see that early on in the year, Polkadot was much stronger than Solana. And halfway through the year, it cycles back. Solana is much stronger than Polkadot. Now you can see the lines are converging again to be meeting kind of in the middle and this is what happens and this is the message for everybody if you are an active trader always think about these cycles and rotations from one asset to another now another way of looking at it as well as polka dot here just hit a new four month high congratulations we were waiting a long time for this puppy we bought it on june 22nd and we've been waiting for it to pop and eventually it has so woo um, but at the same time Po uh, power chains are the heart of polka dot network uh, and they'll be very very important for the future multi-chain world which is exciting not quite ready yet but they're coming soon and again we had this in our retire on crypto portfolio and it was also my pick on george's show dca on sunday so it's up uh i think i picked at 26.50 or 27 dollars on sunday and it's already up at let me see the chart where it is now 37 dollars so it's good. Anyway, that's how these things work, and that's how you can spot exactly what's going to move next. So let's talk about speed matters. A uh, big thank you to Sanjay as well for sending me these materials. You are such a hero. So this was a cool post from Vinny Lingham. Basically, if chains aren't having problems, they're not growing fast enough. So this is all to do with the fact that Solana crashed today. Big outage. Okay, big deal. Let's talk a little bit more. There's obviously... Solana needs more validators. We, uh, just so you guys know, as like some people think we don't know anything about blockchains or anything else, we look at 20 different quant metrics across all blockchains. The number of validators each one has is one of the 20 things we look at. And we know that of the top 20 SCP platforms, Solana scores poorly. They are ranked sixth out of 20 after Cardano, Ethereum, Avalanche, etc. And this is something that they need to brush up. And what happened today proves exactly that. So here you will see that uh, we fundamentally believe in Solana. This is from DeFi India. Again, Sanjay, thank you for sharing this. Um, network hiccups in these formative stages are expected, and we hope to see more validators as the network scales. Yes, great. So in terms of what broke it, 400,000 transactions per second is the claim. Now, we're not sure yet if it was a DDS attack or some other situation, but basically one of their partners, I think it was Serum, was hit by a huge amount of transactions and that took the network down. So now the team know exactly what they need to do. And I guarantee you before year end, they'd be probably double or triple the amount of validators on the network. So these things happen for a reason. 
But this was funny. Speaking of polka dot, of course, Gavin Wood comes in. <laughs> I know when I mentioned the smart contract wars, this is just hilarious. From Gavin, and Gavin is a genius, and I love him. I love polka dot, etc. But the events of today in crypto just go to show that genuine decentralization and well designed security make a far more valuable prop than some big TPS numbers coming from an exclusive and closed set of servers. If you can't run a full node, yourself, then it's just another bank. So obviously that was a big, big dig at Solana. So these smart contract platform wars are really heating up. And I must say, I'm enjoying this on the outside. Then Algorand, they jump in too. They talk about Algorand is the answer. No downtime, even at 19 million peak daily transactions, etc., etc. So everybody's getting highly competitive. Charles was very quiet today. Anyway, let's switch gears, talk a little about regulation and crypto lending near and dear to our hearts. We all do it. We all love it. But uh, this is, uh, you know, this guy Gensler and regulation is in the news all the time. And we have, I know it's tedious, but we have to talk about it very briefly. I promise no more than 30 seconds. So custodial crypto lending and staking products take on all indicia of securities. Indicia is like earmarks, you know, signs, etc., Gensler tells the block in an interview, and this is kind of scary. So his note to readers is basically, if you have crypto that you lend to a centralized exchange or a centralized lending platform, you are no longer holding your own crypto. You've transferred ownership to the platform or the exchange. And what you have now is counterparty risk, stuff we've spoken about for a long time, stuff that used to scare me in the past until I spoke with Alex Mashinsky. Um, and that platform might be saying, as many of them do, we'll give you 4% or 7% or 10% or 12% if you stake your coins with us, but you actually transfer ownership. And because of that, they see it as all the earmarks or telltale signs of what is a security. That's the problem. That's why Gensler is going after, you know, what Coinbase had planned. And they're probably going to go after BlockFi. Hopefully not Celsius, but probably Celsius too and others. But we'll see. Fingers crossed. They just go away, but we'll see. Finally, a funny one here. The internet doesn't forget. This is the guy that uh, killed the crypto bill in the Senate because he wanted to put in a $50 million defense spending bill for people that are probably lining his pockets. And <laughs> some crypto people that take donations in crypto actually put up a huge billboard in his own state. So this, with the reason I'm sharing this though, this happened in a place called Alabama. Most of you probably don't even know where that is. But if you're from Europe or whatever, but it's a state and this guy is just a little bit comical the way he actually derailed a whole bill that took four or five days to negotiate and just the last minute put a pin in it, which was terrible. But what this warns is next time politicians try and oppose the crypto cyber hornets, they'll think twice because the internet doesn't forget. So I thought that was a fun story. And with that, I'll open up to a little bit of Q&A and I hope everybody's doing fantastic. It's Tuesday. Oh, I went to that pretty quick in 18 minutes. So that means I got more time for you guys. Let me switch camera and jump in and see what we have. A big thank you to all the moderators and everybody out there keeping us safe. So Steve Pat, could you tell me your thoughts on Anchor and also the reason why you don't like AMP? Oh, <laughs> again, just to make it clear, everybody, it's not that we don't like cryptos, but, but we don't like risk. We don't like poor tokenomics, and we like to pick the stronger crypto. So let's look at both real quick, and I'll pull them up. And I don't want people to be put off by this. And even if a model say something isn't necessarily good, it doesn't mean it's not going to pop. So we've seen thousands of cases where cryptos just go wild out there. So first of all, AMP. Um, i got a ton of them here. AMP is such a common ticker. This is ample fourth app. So uh, here, it basically, the reason we don't like it is very, very high inflation, very high insider distribution, only a fraction circulating, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So that's amp. Second one is anchor. Anchor did better. Um, the exact numbers are actually no, not much better. Very similar. They have less inflation, but also kind of crap. So both of them, one of them scores in the bottom fiftieth percentile. The other one in the bottom 52nd percentile. 
That's why we don't like both, because there are better, better structured uh, platforms with more value props. Luke, good to see you again. If ETH becomes deflationary, will SOL demand grow despite 8% inflation? Centralization seems SOL is faster, cheaper, but ETH better tokenomics and catalyst. Yeah, it's older. The older the project, typically the better tokenomics. Like if you look at Cardano, there was a lot of pocket lying in the middle, but now it's like all the tokens are kind of issued and that's what happens over time so the longer something go is hanging around for the better the tokenomics become eventually uh, in terms of what's going to happen the whole thesis for solana was all of the dApps, all of the dexes all of the tvl all of the transactions the speed the tiny size of the market cap compared to cardano and solana that was the reason we liked it and it seemed to be of all the top 20 smart contract platforms, uh, this one had the highest score to be the ETH killer, hence the investment thesis. It is far from perfect. It is a little bit too decentralized, which, which we just discovered. It needs more validators, but the team behind it will fix that. So um, that's what's going to happen. In terms of uh, inflation, if you look at the usage as they get more into the NFT space and the amount of staking that happens, there'll still be a huge demand. So the the protocol is still so small from a market cap perspective it can easily absorb that type of inflation so that's what happens and also when you compare the inflation rate of solana to the top 20 it is not that bad at all so everything is comparative eric atkins video idea show and tell how to cash out of the hard forks for those of us who have huddled a while don't want to put btc at risk very very good question Eric will work on something in answer to that. Thank you for that. MT, are you still bullish on PATH? Extremely bullish on PATH, MT. And we bought it uh, last week on, on the dip. And it's up a little bit ever since. And guess who sold Tesla to buy PATH? Kathy Wood, just the other day. So, uh, yeah, extremely bullish on PATH. Pi, 3.14. Um, Saul crushed, I thought, uh, mostly one reason, no? Sol crash, I thought, mostly one reason. I think, the, well, the main reason for Sol having such a bad day is obviously it was overbought. A lot of the money from traders, again, got cycled out to other protocols. And then they had the outage today. And there's a lot of FUD flying around about how, oh, Solana was hacked and FTX was hacked and everything else. So we'll find out what the truth is kind of tomorrow. But so far, uh, it has bounced very nicely. Wow, it fell to, let me see, 142, and now it's 156. So uh, it was a great sniping opportunity for anybody with the courage. I tend to buy Solana no more than 136. I still have limit orders in to buy more at 136. It didn't get that low, <clears throat> unfortunately. <laughs> I was kind of hoping it would. So let me see. Somebody's mother from New Zealand. Hello, New Zealand. Thoughts on HUD-8 and the upcoming offering. I have read all the SEC filings and feel it's positive long-term HODL. Yeah, what happens, I, I saw that too. And when HUD-8, what they want to do is issue more shares. That's going to delight, dilute the existing shareholders, which would not be good. I can think it's about to the tune of 10 or 15% dilution. I need to check those numbers again. That will have an impact on the business. But what they're doing is bringing in money to buy more rigs, to mint more Bitcoin. So short term for the next three, four months, typically it'll put downward pressure on the stock and then it'll all absorb and go forward and it'll be better long term. So if you're a long term holder, it's OK news. Uh, Ronnie Oliveira, uh, do you think the US regulations are capable of banning cryptocurrency in the USA? No, there's too many politicians that are on board with crypto. Uh, you have the head of the regulation department, SEC, Gary Gensler. He actually likes Bitcoin. And he is not going to go after Ethereum. So those two are fine. That's why about a month ago, we built the crypto compendium to be able to manage and estimate crypto risk. That was the reason behind that, because of his kind of saber rattling in the space. And that's what made us nervous. But um, no, Ronnie, it can't happen. And it's the beauty of crypto is if they try to ban it, it just makes them more popular. And what people will do is they'll start leaving. All the people that have a lot of Bitcoin... And I read somewhere, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that half of all billionaires in the world today are minted because of crypto. This is the biggest wealth transfer in the history of the world, which is huge. So what are these people going to do? 
If if the U.S. bans it, they're just going to leave. They're all going to be on the beach in El Salvador, and they're going to go to Puerto Rico, and they're going to go to Portugal and Switzerland and all these cool places. That's what's going to happen. And the U.S. isn't that stupid. Okay, big tree, blue sea. Would you continue to layer in ETH or concentrate on other alts? I am perplexed. This is one of the things that's giving me gray hair right now is because I'm a little bit nervous about ETH 2.0. I have a big bag. I'm trying to rebalance out my portfolio and add more or layer in, as I call it, more Solana and a couple of others. I'm looking carefully as well at a few that I don't have yet, but I want to buy them cheap. I won't let you know what they are until I buy them, but um, we'll see. But the further you go down the path, it's risky. Ethereum is still safe. It's the brand name that's well known. It's been around the longest. It has the most development. But I think a combination between ETH and Solana is a safe bet going forward, despite all the Solana foot. Um, but everything changes. A month from now, that could be a very different situation. Max, 1468. Um, how long do you think Sol could dip? And what we should we set some buy orders to? So I did tell people uh, 151. Uh, was 151, 141, 136, kind of the, the three levels that I like. And we just missed, uh, let me see. Oh, it hit 142 today. It was off by a dollar. Okay, jack up that 141 to like a 143. So next dip, if there is one, you get it. But looking at the chart right now, it looks like it's just going to go straight back up to 160, 170. Um, but, you know, don't chase, wait. We might have a little bit of volatility, but if Bitcoin starts bouncing really hard, it'll drag the rest of the alts with it too. So, um, Ronaldo, what are your thoughts on DSTs using 1031 exchange other than the obvious loss of liquidity for some years and perhaps it's better gains? The free market is so bad. And da, 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 let me check. I am not that familiar with DSTs. So let me see. Let me see, taxes. I might not be able to answer this one. And I, 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 I'm not up to speed on, if it is digital service taxes, I, I, <laughs> I, sometimes I don't have the answer to everything. I have the answer to most stuff and not that. So, Ronaldo, I will figure that out and get back to you tomorrow. I'm very good at that. If I don't have the answer to something, I do dig it up. So sorry. Stanley Dombrowski. And by the way, I'm not somebody who will pretend he knows what he's talking about. Um, I'll be very open and say if I don't. Uh, what are your thoughts on Anchor? Second time from Stanley. Uh, Anchor is has really, really poor tokenomics per our model. And uh, that's one of the reasons we do not like it. A lot of people are looking at it right now. It seems to be very popular. And let's try to find out why. Maybe it's sometimes when things bounce, like 30%, people say, oh, ooh, what about Anchor? But it's not even in my watch list because I try not to confuse myself with things that I don't actually believe in. So the Binance thing, let's see. Why is it getting so much attention right now? Uh, because it looks cheap, I guess. It's trading at $0.09. Cents. People expect it to go back to 13. But yeah, if you look at the tokenomics and the inflation and everything else, it's not, not good at all. So we don't like Anchor. SpongeBob, how are you? Uh, how safe are stable coins if we see a huge market correction of stocks? Crypto, real estate. Uh, well, the reason stable coins pay so much money is there is some risk. But if you're in USDC, I think you'll be pretty safe. Other ones could become a house of cards. And so many people believe that USDT is not really backed by true dollar for dollar um, assets. So that would definitely be a risky one to hold if there is a market crash. So do not hold USDT. USDC, it has really solid backers, really well regulated, backed by Circle, tons of licenses, really good team. I trust USDC. So that should be remain pegged to the dollar. Aaron Sexton, um, do you still believe that Sol will be the faster horse for the rest of the year compared to Bitcoin and ETH? I hold all, uh, but looking for a faster move to, the, to be a whole coiner. Uh, good question. I still believe in Solana. Um, they have this hiccup, but as I tried to make the case, you know, they can learn from it and they'll bring about more scalability, more validators, so it's nothing but goodness. But just so much is being built on the Solana network. So much has been locked in TVL. It's still not reflected in the market cap. 
And that's why I believe it has more upside than anything else. But we're working on a new third model to look at smart contract platforms, benchmark it to the compendium, and tie in all of the actual metrics that include things like branding and other factors we never looked at before. So stay tuned for that. And remember as well, the way things work in these markets is the brand with the most name recognition gets the most money. And if you look at people like Sam Bankman-Fried and how he's out there chatting to everybody all the time and how he's so well connected to the Solana network, I think that's nothing but positives. And a big thank you for your donations as well. Mike Mancuso, Randy Bear, I'm a whole corner today. Well done. And Steve Guernsey. And Randy, keep your security locked down because the world now may know you are a whole coiner. So if Bitcoin goes to a million bucks, be careful. IROC 007. Hi, too late for Luna, Coinpendium facts. Yeah, Luna is great. It has a very good score on the Coinpendium. <laughs> Crypto Compendium is a people call Coinpendium. You gotta hashtag that. Um, but it is just it just ran too much and I was watching it for months. And uh, as I say, you can't catch them all. But let's see if there is any weakness on things like Elrond or Luna, I'm jumping in. But I just have this habit of not chasing. So let's have a quick look at just the last 90 days. Yeah, I like I like Luna low 30s. That's where I would get in. Um, and everything else is great with the project. So good question. Luke again. Will Nano compete with Bitcoin Lightning Network? And could Nano with fair distribution? No inflation, low market cap, faster free eventually be a buy? Dangerous. There's a lot of problems with Nano. I don't think anything will displace Lightning uh, for a whole host of reasons I don't have time to go into here. Um, Nano has just been around. It was one of those things when things are just kind of, uh, I don't know. It could. We are, we're going to have a look at it. We did have a look actually at Nano from a compendium perspective and a few other reasons, but it just like there's no way that we could displace uh, Lightning. But it did come out okay, actually extremely well on uh, the compendium top 10 percentile because they, again, they've been around a while. They've got no inflation project, pretty okay, decentralized, etc. But um, not there was other reasons why they're in such a space that may not be able to make it work. So for that reason, we didn't invest, but we will monitor and dig deeper. Thank you, Luke, for the question. And Hamada, out of all the FUD that can hit Bitcoin, one stock market crash, two infrastructure bill, three tether ticking time bomb, another danger. What worries you the most? And what can the average investor like most of us do to hedge? So... Right now, I think the next three months will be incredibly good for Bitcoin, despite all the FUD. Bitcoin has been attacked by FUD every day since its inception. Everybody wants to bring it down. And it's bulletproof <laughs> because nobody controls it. It just plods along and does its thing every what, every block or whatever. Um, so stock market crash will bring about some liquidity. But I do believe we're almost at the tipping point where Bitcoin will become the risk off asset which means it'll be a flight to safety so people might be selling their tesla if they're worried and they'll be buying bitcoin with it and nobody wants to hold cash nobody even though some people do so that's what happened in the stock market crash infrastructure bill i think that infrastructure bill needs to be modified for blockchain and the u.s government needs to invest in blockchain so that's that, that, that'll that only go after kind of tax people and they'll do the right thing and people should pay tax if they make capital gains in crypto that's fine um, tether ticking time bomb I've covered that a number of times if it does blow up yes it'll be a 15% hit to the crypto market boom but it'll recover pretty fast and uh, that's it other dangers right now I think the, oh, the Europeans concern me some of the actions by the United Kingdom and Lagarde and the IMF and the central bankers, they are really getting nervous and they're putting a lot of pressure on their politicians. They're lobbying for strong rules against crypto. But, you know, US is the land of the free. So I think Europe, there's some smart people in Europe too. They're not going to kill it, not going to ban it. So I'm, I'm not, not concerned so much about the regulatory risk. I'm a little bit concerned about the crypto lending regulatory risk. 
but I think they'll they'll work something out because it's like anything else. You know, if they do get shut down by the SEC, they get a smack on the wrist, they pay a fine, they move on. So Chad G, are you planning to retire on Tesla or MicroStrategy videos? I want to diversify into some fast horses. Great idea. I will, uh, actually, I'll do that. It'll probably be Tesla because doing one on MicroStrategy is kind of like doing one on Bitcoin, which I've done. But uh, I'm also working on a combo plan of what I would do in terms of building a perfect hedge of three to five assets and how I would retire. I already know what those are, and that's going to be coming too. Nav, thoughts on Sol and Mainnet's shutdown? Expect more FUD? Yes, expect FUD for days. But even just looking at the chart right now, I mean, all of these projects, they're still so nascent and new. You're always going to have issues and problems, and, and uh, they'll learn from it, and they have money to fix it. And the people behind this, they're going after Ethereum. But that, that bounce right now is uh, quite spectacular from 142 up to 160. Ah, 141 is just so annoying because uh, anyway, a lot of people got 151, so they're doing fine. Um, but that's the, the beauty of this market is just made with the volatility is so nice sometimes. And Bitcoin went up 65 bucks. Yee. Um, let me see. Uh, bring back the farm. When you analyze a coin, what do you think you look for when measuring tokenomics? You said 30, 30, 30 coins, bitcoins in circulation, anything else? Oh, a whole bunch of stuff. You look at the space. I tend to be very focused on smart contract platforms and DeFi. So uh, I have, like, beyond the smart contract platforms, I also own Uniswap and Aave and Chainlink. Um, so we also look at the addressable market, leadership team, experience, the technology, the competition, where they rank, uh, and a whole bunch of other factors, the revenue model, sustainability, longevity, all the stuff that's in the uh, Should I Buy series. There's 10 points that we look at, and we map them all out there carefully. And Cryptolicious, uh, Polkadot might moon, own both Sol and Dot. Good. It's good to have a mix. And Polkadot, you know, should be $100. That's kind of my target for year. And it was a little bit higher, but I revised it down. But now that it's moving, we'll see. Um, it's just still a little bit early. There's uh, some stuff to launch, so we have to wait and hold on for that. Chad Height, I'm worried about the stock market. <laughs> I've been worried about the stock market since the 1st of August. And ever since it hit 4,500, I said, okay, uh, that's it. It, it, ca it can't. A lot of people are saying it's going to go to 5,000. My target from the beginning of the year and I make long-term plans and targets and lines in the sand. And I said 4,500 S&P was my target for year-end. If it hit it earlier, I'd go into more bearish cash positions. So I moved into more cash August 1st. And uh, we'll see. I wouldn't say 50% cash. It's a bit heavy. I'm about 20% cash right now. Maybe 22% depending on the day. But uh, I don't see a crash happening because there's so much money. Crazy amounts of money keep everything afloat. And people aren't keeping money in the banks that pay 0% interest. So it'll all go into crypto. It'll all go into precious metals, uh, commodities, that type of stuff. So uh, Chad, I watched Chad. And I've been watching the S&P chart as well very intently over the last couple of days. You know, it's been down, what, five, six days in a row. So we still have a ways to go. But I'm expecting to go down to maybe like 4,000, 4,100. And then it'll rebound. Alpha Jester, um, does the, oh, hang on a second. I missed one. Uh, bug Duck Kiwi, another Kiwi or an Australian. Um, possible that Bitcoin outperforms ETH, Sol, etc. When institutions start investing heavy in crypto, also your fastest horse of the rest of bull run. So I think uh, Bitcoin will do well. I'm extremely concerned about the supply and the exchanges. And Michael Saylor buying another 5,000 coins. He's like 114,000 right now. I was like, Phew. but he's getting the attention of all the other companies. And there's another interesting stat that MicroStrategy now has more cash on their balance sheet in the form of crypto than some of the biggest companies in the world, like Home Depot and others. So it is insane. And I expect a lot of treasury announcements to happen September on October, because people need, with companies sitting on huge amounts of cash, like the Apples and the Googles of the world, they need to do something with it. Um, so we'll see if that does happen. Big supply crunch, it'll go parabolic, straight north 100,000. 
and then we'll see. And that'll pull Ethereum and Solana with it, and Ethereum will go straight to 8,900, and Solana <laughs> anywhere from 500 is very, very possible. Uh, so it's all about risk, though. You saw today the risk of Solana. It's not fully baked. It's very volatile, and it can go down. And Solana stu- or Ethereum stood up. So this is the more you go out on the risk axis, the more you expose. That's why it's better to have a bigger bag of the safer things. Um, but uh, hope that answers the question. Alpha Jester, does the tenuous macroeconomic circumstances and talk of potential crash threaten the chance of an extended bull run or a super cycle? Uh, with the way things work in the stock markets, if there is a crash, it'll be bounce right back. So things fall fast and they rebound very quickly. Total what they call V-shaped recovery. So it might be another blip that'll take us into 2022, but I don't think it'll impact the bull run. It'll cause liquidations. It'll cause people selling out and buying other things. And that's just normal. But again, there's just so much money in the system and the money printing is going to continue because they painted themselves into a box. So um, yeah, that's why I have cash is so I can snipe the dips when the market does, does fall. Nick Johnson, do you think becoming a millionaire by 2025 is possible with one Bitcoin and 32 ETH? Uh, Absolutely. Yes, absolutely, Nick. Be careful of your crypto. Uh, Easy. There's so much talk of Bitcoin going to 500,000 by 2025. So easy. And so many reports of Ethereum going to 35,000. So you'll, you'll make it probably just on your Ethereum alone. And your Bitcoin be worth at least half a million. So that's 1.5 million right there. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> and I don't want to sound uh, too uh, hopium like, but if you look at the money printing and the debasement of the currency, a million dollars won't be worth that much in the future anyway. So, Chad G, on Tesla, would you have a deep dive into Tesla and your personal review of FSD 10 and what it means for the future of Tesla price action? Yes, I need to do that. I've been brushing up my models and all of the stuff, and I'm working on all of the different revenue streams that Tesla will bring in as well, including the robot, including the solar play and the power walls, the FSD revenue business and everything else. I will do that. But my latest estimate is today, Tesla, based on Earnings over the next 12 months is trading at a PE of 77 for a company that's growing earnings way over 50%. That's a peg ratio that is extremely low. So uh, I'll definitely do that, Chad. Uh, good suggestion. Uh, Santiago L, uh, any thoughts on Perpetual Protocol and KuCoin token? I like KuCoin, but Perpetual uh, token, I don't even know if I have it. doesn't ring a bell. i got Perpetual Protocol, but we haven't crunched the numbers on it, I'm afraid. Um... And I can't remember the reason why. Let me have a quick a quick look as to why why we walked away. So I look at everything, and then if there's something that immediately turns me off, I walk away and don't waste any more time on it. Um, hmm. It looks okay. What space is it? Hang on a second. Yeah, you can. It's a DEX. So many DEXs. AMMs everywhere. Um, the the DEX space is just viciously competitive right now. I had another request to look at a DEX this morning. And same type of thing. Once you're out there, uh, it's hard to, hard to do well in those DEXs. But I will have a look. I will run some numbers on Perpetual Protocol. Because it just made it into the top 100. And uh, but for some reason or the other in the past, I walked away. So thank you for that. And let me find out where I am right now. Catherine Muller, what are your thoughts on NKN and NMR? Mm-hmm. They also don't ring a bell. NKN, right now, it is... Hmm. It's 179. Let's see if I have it in here. NKN, hang on a second. Ooh, yeah, NKN, very poor. <laughs> Didn't do well at all in the model. And the last one is NKN, do not touch it. Extremely bad, extremely risky. Uh, let me see. NMR, hold on a second. 
also very bad. Numerare. So you picked uh, two really bad ones. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, everybody stick stick with the top names. Top 20, maybe top 50. When you start dabbling outside the top 100, it's super risky space, and they all have issues. They all have a pimple or a wart somewhere that you're not going to like. Um, so let me see. Sorry about that, Catherine Muller. Uh, Robin DeKlein, uh, you, Europe is still awake. What is your opinion on Moon River? I really like the coin. Not sure about the tokenomics, thoughts, TPS. A lot of people are talking about Moon River now. It seems to be a big favorite of the... Um, but I remember it being small. I had a brief look the other day because someone asked me to look at it. Mover. And yeah, uh, big inflation problems, bad tokenomics, but it's a really hot project. And smart contract play on the Polkadot system. Again, I always say, buy the original, buy Polkadot. Safer, more upside, a safe 3x. Whereas Moon River, you don't know where it's going to go. And I know it's been on fire, and a lot of people jump on things when they're on fire. But it's just way, way, way too risky for me. In fact, uh, yeah, it has. It's done a 4x this year. So, um, but is it going to do another 4x? That's the question. We'll see. So, uh, Robin, yeah, be careful with Moon River. We'll have a deeper look because um, I am interested in... Because I, I analyzed all the Solana ecosystem plays couldn't find anything worthwhile and i'll do the same thing now with the polka dot ecosystem because i am very bullish in polka dot so thanks for your donation as well howard oops <laughs> uh robert holochain holochain is the future of every cryptocurrency i heard yeah titi blusk good morning from south korea hello <laughs> south korea too and alice alan machos global party people thank you for caring for the animals my pleasure it gives us a lot of pleasure too thank you we have a platform where we can give back. So big thank you to everybody as well. Um, Nick Bedford, thank you for the fib MSC videos. Good. I hope you, hope you like them. If you want more TA videos, drop a comment in the video below. I will do them. And uh, Deant007, congratulations on your awesome channel. Thank you. Jeff Hamburg, <laughs> you're there again. Um, thank you, Jeff. And we'll be in touch very soon. Abby Reddy, David Dwyer, Snowfall, Pi314, and Paul Z, Thomas Lean, and Trish Hill. And Logan Evans, Sass Crypto, and William Arthur Ketton. And a big good night, everybody. But before I wrap, Bitcoin still up there. It was 25 bucks more. Ethereum, we just switched to a new day. It's 5.09, so basically nine minutes into the new day. And let's see as well. Yeah, it should be, I think I expect it to be a nice night tonight. Now that we're through the golden cross for Bitcoin. We'll see if it does what it does 80% of the time, but it should go up. But expect turbulence in September. Big thank you, everybody. Have a good night.